latest news in North Central Washington, go to ncwlife.com or find us on Facebook. Got a news tip? Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-2020. Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And it was a wet start to our day. I don't know about you, but that rain woke me up. I think it was around 145 this morning. Heavy, heavy rain and still some pretty low hanging clouds out there as we take a look at around our beautiful Wenatchee Valley. Here's some uh, rain totals over the last 12 hours. Circled are some uh, areas in eastern Washington. Here in Wenatchee, about a quarter of an inch of rain. Uh, down in Moses Lake, a little bit less than that. Four tenths up in Omac and all the way up to six tenths of an inch of rain in far eastern Washington in the Spokane area. So it was a pretty good dousing. Will we see more rain showers this week? We'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later on in your weather forecast. And now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. Stamil Growers announced it's adding Yakima-based Hanson Fruit Company as a grower marketing partner, and a Chelan County PUD contractor will rebuild the boat launch parking lot at Old Mill Park. That's closing the launch for a time this summer. But first, we begin tonight. An afraid of man was killed Saturday when his motorcycle crashed on Highway 28 near Quincy. State troopers say it happened on State Route 28, seven miles from Quincy, when 65-year-old Kurt Kinzel of Afreda lost control of his Harley-Davidson motorcycle at milepost 23. The bike slammed into the guardrail, ejecting the rider who was declared dead at the scene. State Patrol says speed may have been the cause of the deadly crash, which is still under investigation. State Patrol also reports that on Friday night near Cleellum, three were injured, Following a five-vehicle crash on Interstate 90, the accident involved three semi-trucks and two cars. The accident happened just before noon Friday when the two cars involved in the crash attempted to exit off the interstate. A Freightliner semi-truck was also attempting to exit when he ran into the rear of one of the cars, causing it to crash into the car ahead of it, which in turn caused the other two semis to crash into the rear of the offending truck in the chain reaction accident. Interstate 90 was partially blocked for almost five hours because of that accident. The driver that caused the accident was transported by ambulance to Kittitas Valley Health Care, and the other two people injured in the crash were treated at the scene. The driver of the freight liner was charged with following too close. Well, in a press release uh, late last week, Stamilk Growers announced it's adding Yakima-based Hanson Fruit Company as a grower marketing partner. Stamilt will assist in marketing the balance of the 2017 apple crop. Starting in June, Hansen's upcoming 2018 cherry and apple crops will be exclusively marketed by Stamilt. The press release said Hansen Fruit Company is a highly high quality grower packer shipper that aligns well with Stamilt's commitment to people, customers and consumers. West Matheson, president of Stamilt, is excited about Hanson Fruit Company, Company coming on board and believes the families are like-minded and well-aligned. Stamilt will perform all of Hanson Fruit Company's sales and marketing. The fruit will be packed under Stamilt's marketing programs. A Chelan County PUD contractor will rebuild the boat launch parking lot at Old Mill Park after more than 20 years of service. The PUD looked at options to keep the boat launch open. However, after analyzing safety concerns for the public and workers, it was determined that closing the launch offered the safest, fastest, and most cost-efficient approach to complete the job. The parking lot work includes new asphalt, storm drainage system inspection, all new concrete curbing, and new striping. The project also included removing 18 maple trees back in March and planting another variety better suited for conditions when paving is completed. Alternate boat launch locations include the Manson Bay Boat Launch, the City of Chelan Lakeshore Marina, and the Chelan Riverwalk Boat Launch. 
Coming up next, the United Way of Chelan and Douglas Counties is positioned to enter the next phase of transition in finding a new director. And Dr. Ann Diamond, independent candidate for the state's 12th legislative district, will be holding a second town hall meeting with interested voters in a town hall gathering in Wenatchee tonight. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Having a relationship with your pediatrician is so important. Feeling that sense of trust, that is priceless. I tell everybody about CBCH. I love it there. When I make an appointment, I don't have to take an entire day off. As a working mom, my life is really busy. Family time is everything. That's what we all work towards. And I feel like CBCH respects that. Hi, I'm Cordell Schroeder owner of East Wenatchee Mobile Storage. If you're thinking about making a move anytime soon, check out the East Wenatchee Mini Storage brand new mobile storage service. They drop it off at your location, you pack it, and they pick it up and store it in their protected warehouse at East Wenatchee for as long as you need. When you're ready, they'll drop it off at your new home or office. East Wenatchee Mini Storage is excited to offer this brand new service to our region. Call 509-884-8643 or find us on the web at ewministorage.com. Welcome back. And in other news, after four months under the watchful eye of Interim Executive Director Sarah Erdahl, the United Way of Chelan and Douglas Counties is positioned to enter the next phase of transition. In a press release over the weekend, the United Way will now turn to Pacific Northwest United Way President Jim Cooper to tune up the organization and modernize policies and procedures, which the United Way says will better meet the needs of the broader community. Cooper will also work with the board and staff to shift from a seasonal fundraising campaign centered on workplace giving to year-round diversified resource development focused on talking community impact or taking community impact rather to a whole new level. Cooper and the United Way staff will work closely with the board to hire a new president and CEO expected to be in place sometime in late summer. Dr. Ann Diamond, independent candidate for the state's 12th legislative district, will be holding a second town hall meeting with interested voters in a town hall gathering in Wenatchee tonight. The event will be held at the Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Attendees will have the opportunity to exchange ideas with the candidate and learn about her positions on the issues. For more information on the event, go to www.diamondforhouse.com or call 509-593-3176. Local residents will have the opportunity to visit with Washington State Treasurer Dwayne Davidson this week. The informal visit is this Wednesday at 5.30 at the Lake Chelan Visitor Center. Along with the general public, members of the Chelan, Wenatchee and Leavenworth Chambers of Commerce were also invited to attend. The event is billed as an opportunity to meet the state treasurer and learn more about the state treasurer's office. If you plan on attending, RSVP Roy at info at lakechelan.com or you can call the phone number at 509-682-3503 if you would like to attend. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, your sports update with Eric Granstrom and our feature story tonight. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. J&J Snack Foods makes a lot of dough-filled products. It's really hard to attract labor in this area. We've reached out to Goodwill, and Goodwill came through to help us get that achieved. John started here at the plant a couple of months ago. We promoted him to a dough maker. He's doing well. I'm actually doing great. I'm finally getting more notice and appreciated for my work here. I love the products we make here. If you're struggling finding the labor that you need, reach out to Goodwill. 
Goodwill, there's more behind the store. Do you have what it takes to succeed at Charter College and in a new career? You do if you're a charter type. Charter types are driven. Charter types are team players. Charter types stay positive when things get tough. Charter College isn't for everyone, but if you're ready to work in order to change your life, you're just our type. Charter College, we work to get you to work. Hi there, my name's Patrick and I'm the branch manager here at New American Funding. Applying for a home loan is an exciting time. You may have a lot of questions about how to meet your home loan goals, the loan process, or your borrowing options. We're here to help. We do things differently here at New American Funding. Not only do we have an array of loan products and a team of specialists to support you, but we get to know you personally. We want to earn your trust and business for life. So stop by our Winantry or Chelan office or give us a call today. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Monday. Nearly 7,000 people turned out over the weekend at the Town Toyota Center to root on the Wenatchee Wild in the first two games of the Fred Page Memorial Cup against Prince George Bruce Kings, and the home fans were not disappointed. The BCHL Championship Series began on Friday night and would take nearly 30 minutes of hockey before anyone would score. Our checker had the call on the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network. Arnold, Arnold, tough angle. He's in, shot, save made, loose puck, still alive. Hessler leaves it for Arnold. Arnold feeds it back up top midpoint. Zach now to Demon. He's in. He shoots, save, rebound, score! Sam Hessler with the backhander. Jammed back down into the corner. Played by Weatherby in front. Shot, score! A.J. Vanderbeck. And the Wild strike twice quickly. Up high again, where it's handled by Zek at the midpoint. He'll step over to his left back door. Weatherby shot, score! DeBrower got a piece of it, but into the back of the net it goes. And the Wild cash in on the too many men on the ice. Man advantage, they lead it now three to nothing. Now spun back to the point, and Zek across for Golambus. Back door, threads it through to score! That one may have gone off the skate of De Jong. It went off the skate of someone in the slot area. It was intended to be a crossing pass to the back door for Weatherby. And it hit a skate and caromed in behind De Brower. And that one is in the books. Game one goes to the Wenatchee Wild as the Wild holds serve on their home ice. Austin Park picks up his first shutout of the playoffs, his first shutout of the season overall. So game one, good. Saturday's game two would not be as easy for the home team as the Spruce Kings would light the lamp in the first five minutes. Again, back to the highlights. Our checker on the call. Park comes out, swings it around from the boards, shot and a score. First goal of the series for the Prince George Spruce Kings, and it comes off the right wing wall. Into the corner, it was a give and go with Souter. Thrown back out of the slot, Jared Hovde is there. Lost it to Souter, he's in, he shoots, save, made, he scores! <laughs> A.J. Vanderbeck leading the pile. So maybe he'll get credit for the goal, but it was a turnover in the corner off to of the right of DeBrower. And now chiseled away by Vanderbeck, he's got help. Vanderbeck, over to Souter, he shoots, SCORE! Oh, what a beautiful move by Lucas Souter. And banked out pass, out the center, and here comes Vanderbeck. He's in alone, he shoots, he SCORES! Hayward picks it up over on the far wall. Shoots and he scores! From the same spot where he scored earlier, from the right wing boards. Almost as if you could see the light in his head go, well, you know, I scored one from here earlier, let me try it again. Fizzled in, there's Park. He takes a shot toward the net, but it was gloved by Vanderbeck. Picked up by Weatherby, and he scores! Man. 
And the Wild will head up into Prince George with a two games and none series lead in the BCHL Fred Page Cup Finals. Long bus ride up to Prince George. Game three tonight at the Rolling Mix Concrete Arena at 7 o'clock. Game four tomorrow night in Prince George at 7. We'll have highlights tomorrow morning. On the Les Schwab Prep School Board for the weekend as well, we'll start with high school soccer on Friday. When Anchi Panthers shut out for the second time in a week, falling on the road to West Valley 1 0. When Anchi now 4 and 4 in Big Dime play. Uh, we had the game live on the NCW Life Channel between Eastmont and Moses Lake. In fact, it was Sebastian Moraga and Matt Wisen with a call. All right here. Tries for two, opening the game up on the right side is Flavio Spinoza. To him it goes Flavio, 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 right foot a shot. Go, 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 go! Goal! Eastman Wildcats! Ninth minute of play, Flavio Espinosa makes it 1 0 for the home team. That Good shot, into the box we go. Getting that right foot ready, blocked by the, blocked by the defense, trying again with the left foot. The shot, go, 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 go! Moses Lake. Corner kick for Eastmont. Far corner of the six. Cleared away. The shot. And it stopped. And it goes in. It goes in. It is an unfortunate situation for Moses Lake. But Manny Lopez's goal goes in. After it bounces off a defender. Number two, Luis Oronia. That's a bit of a dangerous touch there. Mr. Santoyo has to come up and take care of it and barely does. Scooped back by Eastmont, the shot, and that is the third goal of the day, second, and this one is Manny Lopez's, no, Johannes Pinoza, I beg your pardon. Showing a message off to somebody here. Feliz sure. cumple mama, happy birthday mom. Happy birthday, Mom. How, is, how about that? There's a quick give and go. Top of the box. Nice ball to see if they connect the shot. Viene, viene, viene. Go, 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 go. Johannes Spinoza. Fifth one overall by my count for the Wildcats. There's the shot. Flavio Spinoza, oh, the header. What a beauty. What a beauty of a header. Matt Wisen. And this one is 5-1. to one. Eastmont. Excellent. He just picked that corner out. You see it all the way from up here where he saw the keeper was not leaving that back door wide open and just picked that out and put a perfect head on that ball. And a quick run by Cortez. This could be interesting. He enters the box. Right foot. The shot. Go, 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 go. Moses Lake makes it 5-2. to two. The heel touched by Espinosa. Johan, the shot across. And there's the sixth goal of the night. Let's see what the referee says. Yes, it counts. Hey, the Chiefs. And there's the whistle that tells us that this is over with a score. Final score, Eastmont 6, Moses Lake 2. So the Wildcats first place in the Big Nine undefeated. Let's get on with the Les Schwab Prep School Board in soccer. Saturday, Manson improved to 3-1 with a 3-1 win over Liberty Bell, while Cashmere notched a non-league win over Tenasca at 6-0. High school baseball first on Friday. Waterville Mansfield swept two from Oroville. Cashmere down Nooksack Valley and Wenatchee lost for the first time in Big Nine. Played Ike, but then came back and won the second end of that doubleheader. On Saturday, OMAC forfeited two games to Cashmere. Nooksack Valley and Chelan split a doubleheader, and Liberty Bell beat up on Manson. On the Les Schwab Prep softball scoreboard from the weekend, we'll turn to that one as well. Waterville Mansfield swept two at Oroville. OMAC topped Cashmere in two games. Wenatchee shut down Eisenhower in both games. On Saturday, it was Liberty Bell big over Manson. 48 runs in two games? Goodness. Also, Cascade swept Chelan. Wenatchee Valley Thunder hosted two games in high school lacrosse over the weekend. On Friday night, it was a big win. Downing Richland 10-6 behind uh, three goals from Jake Reiner. Connor Tilly also came up big on Friday and Saturday. We had that game live on the NCW Life Channel as Wenatchee Valley beat Central Valley by a final of 9-1. to one. Turning to other sports from the weekend, uh, well, actually getting to today, makeup games on the schedule today. Tadaskit at Waterville Mansfield, a couple of double headers in baseball and softball, tennis. Uh, Eastmont hosting West Valley, Eddie on the road at OMAC, and in golf, Eastmont and Wenatchee teams playing at the Moses Lake Country Club. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Life Channel. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Eric. In keeping with the hockey theme, the hockey world was rocked by the tragic death of 16 members of the Humboldt Junior Hockey Team in a bus, cra bus crash back on April 6th. 
In tonight's feature story, an emotional ceremony was held in their honor prior to Wenatchee's first game of its playoff series with Prince George Friday at the Town Toyota Center. Fans, at this time we ask you rise at your table and remove your hats. Joining us tonight at ice level are Don Richard, the director of the BCHL's chaplaincy program and chaplain of the West Kelowna Warriors, and Don Myers, the chaplain for your Wenatchee Wild. Ladies and gentlemen, the entire hockey community has been touched in the days since last Friday's tragedy in Saskatchewan. The Humboldt Broncos, their loss has left a hole in our hearts. But their team and their town have remained in our thoughts and prayers. It's an honor this evening here in Wenatchee to represent the family of chaplains in the British Columbia Hockey League under the umbrella of Hockey Ministries International. It was just another hockey road trip like thousands of bu bus trips every season except one week ago today it wasn't a normal bus trip when the humble Broncos Junior Hockey Club was involved in a terrible crash with a semi-tractor trailer and 16 hockey people lost their lives. The hockey world was heartsick. It was a gut-wrenching experience and devastation rocked and is continuing to rock the tight-knit hockey world. There are devastated families who will not be seeing their sons come home their dads, their husbands. Tonight, we will be praying for the grieving families, for the survivors who are severely injured, and for their families, for the town of Humboldt, Saskatchewan, for first responders and caregivers, and for the truck driver and his family, and for all those who are mourning this devastating and terrible loss. Friends, because Don and I are chaplains does not mean that we have any easy answers to this tragedy. We have wept and mourned right along with you and the entire hockey community. But we cling to the promises that God speaks in times like this. Scripture says that God draws close to the brokenhearted. And Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. We count on that comfort. We know that God is not taken aback by this tragedy, but that he loves our hockey boys more than we do. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we are most thankful in the midst of this dark time for your presence because we know that's what we need the most. We need to make sense of this, and yet that is so hard. Mostly what we need is light in the midst of darkness, and we, Jesus, we know that you bring that light. Would you be with us? Would you stay present and draw even closer in the midst of our mourning and angst? We pray for safety. We pray for healing. We pray for peace and wisdom and consolation. Jesus, thank you that you have promised to bring all of these things into our worlds. It's you that we need the most. Jesus, we pray in your mighty and powerful name. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the messages of support and generosity from all directions in this past week have shown what the hockey community is truly about. The BCHL is united in backing the Humboldt team and the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you join us for 16 seconds of silence. Thank you.
A GoFundMe account for the Humboldt Bronco family has raised nearly $12 million in nine days. We'll be back with a recap of some of our top stories and your complete local weather forecast right after this. Papa Murphy's presents a fresh take on fresh. Here's the deal. If it comes from a freezer, not fresh. Box, not fresh. Bag, not fresh. Fresh means just chopped vegetables. Cheese grated by us daily. Fresh means we don't even have ovens because you have an oven. So you can feel good about feeding it to your Oh. Home bake an XL NY pizza topped with giant pepperoni and ground sausage on an extra large foldable New York style crust. Just $8.99. Papa Murphy's. Love at 425 degrees. The all new Yamaha Wolverine X4 offers four times the proven off road capability, four times the comfort and four times the confidence to deliver four times the excitement on your next outdoor adventure. Lake Wenatchee YMCA Camp programs focus on our four core values of caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility. Make this summer's memories last a lifetime. Pick your theme week today with a wide variety of safe and engaging activities. Lake Wenatchee YMCA Camp is the ultimate summer fun in the sun camp for children, teens, and families. Reserve your child's week today. Welcome back in time now for a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Before we get to the details of that, let's take a look outside our weather window and it was a cloudy one out there today after a very wet start we saw some breezy conditions as we look out towards the beautiful Quincy area and the clouds are still around right now but we should begin to clear out somewhat but expect more windy conditions tomorrow let's take a look at our looping surface map and a cold level level a cold upper level low pressure weather system uh, moved through the region this afternoon. It did bring some leftover scattered showers. Winds also became gusty with the frontal passage across the basin and especially into the Spokane area in Palouse. Wind gusts of around 35 miles per hour have been reported there. Here in the Wenatchee Valley, we saw some breezy conditions as well. Still seeing them out there. Mainly our wind today was about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Rivers and small streams will be on the rise after our wet night, but no flooding is anticipated at this time. Pressure gradients remain tight for Tuesday over most of Washington State with another windy day in store. Winds on Tuesday in the Wenatchee Valley will blow about 15 to 25 miles an hour with gusts as high as 35. By Wednesday, a small weak weather system will arrive and they'll just bring us a 30% chance of scattered showers. And then by Thursday and right through the upcoming weekend, high pressure will move into the western U.S., drying us out and warming us up into the lower to mid 60s for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and also into Sunday. Let's take a look at that forecast. And tonight we will drop down to a low temperature of 39 degrees, 57 tomorrow, but keep in mind it'll be a windy one, mostly cloudy with a slight change chance for rain on Wednesday, Thursday through Sunday back into the 60s. Lots of sunshine too. our warmest day Friday at 65 degrees. And in our video of the day, we bring you closer to the family of one of our own, Eric Granstrom. Eric's mother, Judy, has dementia, and he's been working for months to get her into better living arrangements along with Eric's dad, uh, dad Dave. With the help of many friends and family, they were able to finally finish the move and open the door to their new home on Sunday. Judy's reaction is priceless. <laughs> Welcome home, Dave and Judy! Uh, <laughs> that's everybody that was oh here helping. God. Oh, you didn't make that's nothing. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Your new house! <laughs> And now I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> That's awesome. The Grandstroms recently celebrated their 56th wedding anniversary, and the home they moved into keeps them on the country homestead in western Washington that's been in the family since 1906. 
And if you have a video of the day you'd like to see on the NCW Life Evening News, message us on our Facebook page. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website. And if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com. Thanks for joining us tonight. Tune in to Wake Up Wenatchee Valley tomorrow and have a great night.